Chapter 15, The Pharaoh and Ancient Wisdom. In ancient times, it was the Pharaoh who stood as guardian of the ancient wisdom that trafficked across the grid. In Egypt, the Pharaoh was defined as that which unites the upper and lower Nile. This description was intended to be symbolic of where the upper and lower triangles are united as visualized in the seal of Solomon, more popularly recognized as the Star of David. The upper triangle pointing upwards symbolizes the higher energies and the esoteric world. The lower triangle pointing downward represents the exoteric world which includes outward manifestation and all mundane matters of the earth. The concept of a pharaoh is an aware entity that works with the energies from the lower windows while still looking into the higher windows for direction and guidance. Without saying, the role of the pharaoh is sadly lacking in the consciousness of today's society. As the pharaoh had access to both worlds, his duty was to interpret what information was deemed necessary to release to the outer world of society in order that evolution might achieve its divine manifestation. Ideally, the Pharaoh would balance the esoteric with the exoteric. In other words, he was pumping the morphogenetic grid with information. If a Pharaoh stood his ground and ruled wisely, society would evolve towards a paradise. In addition to the Pharaoh's function, the mystery schools served their own ends and were involved in countless schemes. Whatever their specific agendas might be, all wanted the ear and access of the Pharaoh, for it was there that the symbolic struggle for evolution was at its acme. This struggle included the battles of good versus evil which many philosophers have credited for making possible the evolutionary process. Because evil cannot be denied or eliminated, it must be balanced, and it is at this point that the mystery schools come into play. Balancing of evil is essential to the constructs of the universe. The Pharaonic line had its most severe setback at the time of Moses, an Egyptian high priest who was groomed for the Pharaoh ship. Moses literally initiated the downfall of Egypt by orchestrating the Exodus and taking off with the Arcadian staff, a magical technical device handed down from Atlantis. For Moses to abandon his Egyptian divinity was devastating to the priesthood for his particular school was the last one to have been initiated in magic. Since that time period, the role of the Pharaoh has been compartmented and factionalized into various secret societies which vie for power and influence. The traditional role of the Pharaoh has been lost to the populace at large, and the degradation of this institution is clearly dramatized in recent times by the plight of the Montauk Indians. The word Pharaoh itself means great house. If you break down the etymology, which is the study of word origins, FYI, even further, you discover that the word great is derived from the Greek and Persian words magos and maz, respectively, or magic. House is derived from Indo-European word skew, or q, which means to hide. Translated, this all means that the word pharaoh means magic, hiding place. It fits the description of this puzzle perfectly. While the Pharaoh represented the magic hiding place in human form, the actual physical representation of magic was the Great Pyramid. This pyramid is shaped like the top half of an octahedron. Still unknown to many, there is a reverse pyramid constructed exactly beneath the base of the Great Pyramid. The top pyramid is known as the antechamber and represents creation, while the reverse pyramid is known as the antechamber and represents destruction. 
This makes for a black hole, white hole effect. Together, these two pyramids make an octahedron, which is the exact shape of the Delta T antenna described in the Montauk project. The octahedron is a very key shape in the structure of the Earth's grid. If you can imagine two interlocking tetrahedrons within the structure of the Earth itself, an octahedron would be nestled in the center in a continuous rotation. By generating waves through the field of this octet shape, one can change space and time itself. If one considers that the Earth contains geometric grid patterns that are in continuous rotation, one can grasp that the octahedron would likewise rotate. One must remember that particles in space and time are not continuous. They appear and reappear, but our perception is in sync, like watching a movie, so that these particles appear to be solid and never moving. The particles themselves are created by electromagnetic pulsations that use the octahedron as a conduit. It's a very important word, conduit. File that away. One can get a rough idea by constructing a small octahedron and considering that it is within its own reference frame and within the confines of its own dimension. Now, rotate it 90 degrees at a time on its lateral axis and count the number of points that could receive a pulsation. You will find 12 before you return it to its original position. If one counter rotates the octahedron, there will be another 12 points, which makes a total of 24 potential realities. If one then rotates and counter rotates the octahedron on its vertical axis, the number of realities will come to 48. Each rotation of the original octahedron made up of 12 different realities. It is important to note the number 12 because it is a sacred number. It is reflected in the 12 months of the year, 12 signs of the zodiac, 12 disciples of Christ, in various other ways. The most basic example of 12 as a sacred number is if we take a sphere like a marble and pack as many spheres as possible around it. You will find that 12 spheres or marbles fit exactly around the one. Of course, this suggests that 13 is also a sacred number. We all know there's been much superstition surrounding that number. See, there are 13 members in a witch's coven, 13 people at the Last Supper, if you include Christ, and 13 months in the lunar calendar. The number 13 is also a prime number and was sacred to the ancients. In the above example, we demonstrated 12 different realities around a central reference point. This, an oversimplification of the entire procedure, but will serve to give a very general idea on how geometry interfaces with different realities. As one begins to study the symmetry of reality, it becomes easy to grasp that magical arts were based on definite geometrical principles. Unfortunately, you will find it next to impossible to find a witch or astrologer who fully understands these principles, yet their whole reason for being is based upon them. The knowledge, as stated elsewhere, was taken away and hidden. What we call the Great Pyramid at Giza was essentially the top half of an octahedron, which was built to mimic the Earth's grid so as to affect a potential interface with other realities. Another curious fact about the Great Pyramid is that within its walls, almost every possible description of Egyptian life was given except for who built the pyramid and why. If the builders were so emphatic about explaining such mundane aspects as how Egyptians wash, you would assume that they would have also described how they built the pyramid and what their reasons were. This was a secret. It was not meant to be shared with anyone but those initiated in the mystery schools. If you understand the working principles of the octahedron as described above, you have come a long way towards understanding what the Great Pyramid was all about. When you consider the above realities alluded to in the above example, you begin to realize that the morphogenetic grid itself parlays itself into many different realities and is not exclusive to our own particular earth reality. 
The pyramid was a weighing station or a threshold to these other worlds and to the information on the grid itself. In summary, the pyramid was the magic hiding place and the Pharaoh was the personal representative of that secret. As any knowledge represents potential power, it was his job to stand as guardian so as to maintain a balance between the higher and lower worlds. Of course, the Pharaoh was in human form. There was actually another character with a far more important role in the course of evolution, and he lived in the Great Pyramid itself. Folks, it's refreshment time, intermission time. That was uh, chapter 15 of the Pyramids of Montauk. Stay tuned for the journey will continue. Namaste. Namaskaram.